Are you looking for a guide to troubleshoot your VFD fault codes? Then you're in the right place. Hi, I'm Keith from eMotors Direct, and today we're covering the most common fault codes for VFDs and how to address them. Today, I'm joined by Tony McDonald from Tico Westinghouse Motors Canada. Thank you for stopping by today, Tony. Hi Keith, thanks for having me. Thanks we're, everybody. We're excited to leverage your VFD expertise. So what exactly is a fault code on a VFD? A fault code on a VFD is used to communicate the presence of an issue or abnormal condition. When the VFD detects a problem in its operation or in the connected motor, it generates a fault code to help users and maintenance personnel identify the nature of the problem. Let's start with the voltage faults. All the possible causes and possible solutions are outlined in the Tico Westinghouse manual link in the description. But where do you typically start when you see a voltage fault on a BFD? Start by measuring the voltage between phases on the incoming side of the VFD to see if you have an active voltage issue. If there's an active over or under voltage on the input side of the VFD, you'll need to investigate your power supply. Next, measure the voltage of the DC bus of the VFD and compare it to the manufacturer's label. This is how we confirm the VFD is measuring itself correctly. If there's a discrepancy, disconnect all control and load side wiring. This way, only the line side power is feeding into the VFD. Check again to see if the problem is still there. If the problem is gone, it's likely something was either drawing down or adding voltage to the VFD. In the case of an over voltage fault, it's important to know in what part of the operation the fault happened. If it occurred while you are slowing down or stopping the motor, it's likely that your load started to overdrive the motor and in fact turned the motor into a generator, feeding power back onto the VFD. You can try to correct this by extending the deacceleration time, otherwise you may need to look into a braking resistor. Faulty cables or motors can also cause the VFD to indicate an over voltage fault. Where possible, try running the motor unloaded. Next, try running the VFD without a motor connected on the load terminals. Lastly, try running the VFD with a test motor. This way you can see how or when the fault may occur and help isolate where the problem may be coming from. Moving on to overcurrent faults and overload, which is represented as OC and OL on the VFD screen, where do you usually start? Overload and overcurrent faults are very similar. Both indicate a high amperage draw on the load side of the VFD. Overload means the amp draw is higher than the motor FLA that was programmed into the VFD. Overcurrent means that there is an amp draw higher than the current rating of the VFD itself. Verify that the motor or application is not jammed or stuck. For an overload, also confirm that the FLA is programmed correctly. Verify that the motor is sized correctly for the application itself. Try running the motor unloaded where possible. Run the VFD without anything connected to the load side of the VFD. Then run the VFD with a test motor. This way you can isolate to see where and when the fault might be occurring. And overheating fault codes, which is represented as OH on the VFD screen. Where do you usually start? Verify that all fans on the VFD and the MCC or enclosure are operational. Also ensure that any filters are clean and unclogged so that they are not limiting airflow. It may be necessary to add additional cooling. And lastly, system messages. Let's start with SE01, set range error. What usually causes that and how do you resolve it? The SE01 set range error is commonly seen when end users are changing the motor RPM to a different rating from the default 1800 RPM. The motor RPM parameter 02-03 is linked to the motor pulse parameter 02-07, and both are ways of expressing motor speed. The programming, however, doesn't like it when these two parameters don't match. It's also possible to see this fault when manipulating any of the group 01 parameters. It's usually best to leave the group 01 alone, unless you know what you're doing. The STPI zero speed stop error is pretty simple. 
The VFD has an active run signal, but has a speed reference of zero hertz. The VFD cannot run the motor at zero speed. Review your system to see if there is a reason the VFD has no speed signal. ST01 and ST02 save torque off. The VFD will come with factory installed jumpers on SF1, SF2, and SG. These are to be used at, for a safe torque off application. It is common to see end users try to use these inputs as enables, but the trick is the VFD treats them like a fault that needs to be reset each time they are open. For an enable, I suggest using a digital input programmed to a base block function. A base block is when the VFD is in a state where it will not go into a run condition. There are some built-in protections such as too many consecutive overload faults in a short period of time. You can, however, program a digital input to activate a base block. Warning, ES67. This message comes up when you have a digital input programmed with an emergency stop function and that digital input is currently active. Tony, thanks for coming to teach us VFD fault codes. I know this will be helpful for folks who are troubleshooting their VFD fault codes. For more information, refer to the Tico Westinghouse VFD manuals linked in the description of this video. Check out our other Tico Westinghouse VFD videos on our YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.